This next video is going through the schematic and showing you how a tube amplifier works as best as I can. So hopefully you'll understand what you're doing while you're building this. We're going to start with the power supply. On this end is your 120 volt AC. And it goes into this transformer, which is a 380 volt center tap transformer. The way this works is a full wave solid state amplifier is the center tap of the secondary is connected to the ground. Each side of the secondary, which is 190 volts each, is sent through a diode that becomes the positive side of the DC. The first thing in the circuit will be this 33 UF capacitor and we intentionally keep this one fairly small so that when you power on the amplifier you don't have a huge influx surge of current trying to charge an oversized capacitor in this location which would stress the transformer and could, po could possibly short it out or cause other problems. The next phase is it goes through this 2 Henry choke which has 175 ohms across it. What a choke does is it helps filter out the the loops in the or the the waves in the AC and it allows DC to flow through more than the AC. So it acts as an additional filtering to what these capacitors are doing. The next part is a larger 220 UF capacitor that acts as a filter and also acts as a storage capacitor for when the amplifier pulls a strong current it will pull it from this capacitor because this resistance in this choke will make it easier to pull it from the capacitor instead of this one here that's a noise that where the AC is noisier. Okay, this right here is the 60 milliamp approximate load of the main output tubes. And then there will be a pair of these 4.7k resistors with a 47 uf capacitor that decouples the driver tube section which is this amperage pull from this part of the amplifier and it's important that this be here so that when the driver tube has a current draw it'll pull it from this capacitor and what's going on in this part of the amplifier doesn't affect this part over here. I simmed this power supply using some software called PSUD2 and you can download it at DuncanAmps.com. It's very helpful in making sure that you have enough filtering in the circuit. When I look at the sim there's only a 0 0.04 volt ripple in the current or the voltage at this point and it's at the 0 0.001 something at this point in the driver tube where it's most sensitive so that's showing me that this is enough filtration to make sure that the amplifier doesn't have any AC hum in it. Now we're going to go to the amplifier schematic itself. This is a version that I drew myself, but I was inspired from Walton Audio's Piccolo amp that uses a PCL86, which is a similar tube, but has a different filament voltage. And we are again using a 6BM8. So we'll follow the signal through this amplifier to try to understand what everything is and why it's here. The input comes in on here and here. This is a, the ground for the amplifier. 
and here's the positive on the input. And it goes through this 100K uh, audio taper potentiometer. And as you move it to a louder volume, it moves closer to this leg of the circuit being direct, you know, to the input. And as you move it down in this direction, it gets closer to ground, which will make it quieter. The tubes need a reference to ground on the grid. And you actually could leave out this one mega ohm resistor because this potentiometer would provide the connection to the ground. But this is here as a safety in case something happens and the wiper on this potentiometer loses connection to the inside itself that we don't have a grid that doesn't have a connection to ground which would make the tube run away and red plate and cause all kinds of bad problems. So this one mega ohm resistor is here more of as a safety thing in case this potentiometer fails. On the cathode of this tube, this is something we're going to experiment with once we get the amplifier built. Um, the original design had a 1k resistor from the cathode to ground and what this does is this resistance creates a positive voltage at the cathode in relation to ground. So when you go across from here to the grid there will be a negative voltage on the grid of 0.8 volts in this instance, which is how you bias the tube. This is called a cathode bias. If we have just a resistor here without a capacitor bypassing it, this helps reduce distortion by introducing some negative feedback into the cathode of the driver tube. Because we're going to be using a different kind of feedback loop on this amplifier design, we don't really need this unbypassed resistance here to be providing feedback as well as it will reduce the output of the amplifier. So I'm going to be trying to use a diode, which has almost no resistance, as the voltage drop to create this 0.8 volts. And again, we'll be experimenting with these values. We may try the 1K resistor and see what it sounds like, or maybe the 1K resistor with a capacitor bypassing it. So there's several things we can do here on this part of the amplifier to influence the way it sounds. So on this side, here is the B plus that comes up from the power supply. And here's that 4.7K ohm resistor that I showed that was in the power supply and the 47 UF capacitor that's the storage capacitor for the driver tube. So the B plus comes up, goes through this 100K plate load resistor up to the plate of the driver tube. And we're looking for about 160 to 175 volts here. We got 220 volts here. So the way that this tube amplifies the sound that comes on the input, when you vary the voltage here, it varies the current that runs through this tube. And as the current varies that goes through the tube, the voltage drop across this plate load resistor changes, which comes out on this, this part of the circuit right here to this coupling capacitor. What it's seen here as is a more of a voltage change than here. So we may only have one volt of change here 
where we may end up with 50 volts or 20, 20 to 50 volts of change here. And that's how tube amplifiers amplify the signal. So at this point, we've also got this 160 volts of DC with 20 volt swing or 30 volt swing of signal voltage here. We want the signal voltage swing, which is AC, to go through this capacitor, but we want to block the DC, which is what this coupling capacitor does. So on this side, we've got 160 volts of DC. On this side, we don't. So our AC signal is coming through here. Here's our grid leak resistor, with it, which is going to provide the bias for this grid. This cathode resistor and bypass capacitor sets the voltage drop between the ground reference and the cathode at 8.4 volts. Because the grid is referenced to ground, the difference between this cathode and this grid will end up with eight point, negative 8.4 volts on the grid of the driver tube. This 1K resistor is what's called a grid stopper, and it helps keep the amplifier stable and from oscillating, which Probably isn't as big a deal on this amplifier design as on some, but it doesn't hurt anything to put this in the circuit. And it's something I just like doing on the amplifiers I build to make sure that they remain stable. Okay, on this side, the B plus goes through this, the primary of this output transformer and comes out on this side where we have 250 volts on the plate of this tube, which is the driver tube. And just like on this tube, when the voltage on this grid changes, it varies the current across from the plate to the cathode on this tube, which creates an AC signal, which is the sound, in the power transformer, which is then stepped down from 5,000 ohms to 8 ohms to match the speaker impedance and drive the speakers. The design we're going to be using in this amp is called an ultralinear, and it gets that name from using a center tap off of the primary of the output transformer, which is usually around 40 to 43 percent across this pr primary coil and it goes to the screen of this tube through this 1.2k ohm resistor and the purpose of this resistor is to ensure that the voltage potential on this screen is lower than the plate because we want the electrons to flow from this cathode to the plate and the voltage at this screen helps accelerate the electrons across the tube which increases the power output. This type of design with ultralinear is less prone to distortion and while you could set this amp up as a triode strapped design instead of an ultralinear, which would mean that you would change this resistor to maybe a 300 or 400 ohm resistor and connect it straight to this side of the output transformer. It would put out less power than it will as an ultralinear. Now one thing you can do to save some money is use an output transformer that doesn't have this ultralinear tap. You can probably save $50 or more getting a, the simpler type output transformers that don't have this tap and connect it here 
with as a triode strap. And I will include a, a schematic in the web upload I do for both kinds in case you decide to save some money and use the cheaper type. But I highly recommend spending the money on some better transformers that have this extra tap on them. And the last part, and this is something that I picked up off Audio Karma from a guy named Kegger, who's unfortunately no longer with us. He used this design in a lot of his amplifier that's called a shade feedback. And the way this works is it connects the plate, which is the output of this tube back to the plate on this tube which is the output of this one and it creates a feedback loop back to the input of the tube that the output's coming from like this that helps reduce the distortion and you can adjust the value of this capac of this resistor to change the amount of feedback and it also changes the sound that you get out of the amplifier. We're going to start off with a 300K, and we may go down to 200K. We may go up to 400K. I'm not sure exactly where this is going to end up. I like this kind of feedback because it's not as sensitive to the brand and type of output transformer that's used. A lot of amplifiers use what's called global negative feedback that'll come off of the positive of the output side, goes over and connects to the cathode of the driver tube, and usually has a couple of resistors and a couple of real small capacitors that set up a little step network that's a lot, to me, a lot more complicated to calculate up to ensure that you don't end up with an amplifier that goes into oscillation, which makes some unstable, melts tubes, causes really bad things to happen. And that resistor capacitor network has to be adjusted for each type of transformer. So if you don't use this, this exact Ed core transformer that I'm using, and you decide to use you know, a, a, a cheaper brand or a different manufacturer than the step network that's set up for this, for this transformer wouldn't work in your circuit. This is pretty universal because it's not involved with the output transformer itself. And it seems to work really well. Um, the other thing that I'll say is if you do connect this as a triode instead of a ultralinear, you probably won't need this shade feedback circuit. As triode amps are pretty low distortion without any feedback at all, and it'll have less output, and so you don't want this in the circuit that's going to reduce the output of the amplifier. So that's basically covering the operation of this amplifier and how everything works and why I designed the circuit the way I did. And the next video will dive into the part selection, why I chose the parts that I did, and how I decided on the layout and the size chassis and all of those sorts of things to build this amplifier. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my channel, please subscribe and like, and I'll look for you on the next video.